This is the talk of Music City Real Estate. Welcome back to another episode of the Talk of Music City Real Estate. Where we educate and motivate all things real estate. Hey, my name is Monty Moore with Realty One Group Music City. And I'm Jason Hoover, standing in for Carrie Ann with CMG Financial. We miss Carrie Ann, don't we, Jason? We do, 100%. Hey, every week we'll be posting a new episode chock full of Nashville real estate value. You can follow along and subscribe at TalkMusicCity.com. Got a question for us? Ask away at questions at TalkMusicCity.com. City.com. That's questions at talkmusiccity.com. What? <laughs> we got DJ go. Jim over here. DJ wicked, Jim. wicked, wicked. <laughs> well, how's it going, Monty? Hey, we've got a special guest with us today. The one and only, the Bab Fabulous. I mean, we were missing our favorite blonde, so we brought in another favorite blonde. <laughs> that's it, that's it. <laughs> Chrissy Almondson. Chrissy is the one of the heartbeats of this organization here. Chrissy, so glad to have you. Well, thank you. Just glad to, you <laughs> and you were. Uh, we're looking forward to hearing the wisdom that you're going to share with us. Yes, I'll do my uh, best. Are you looking forward to that too? I am. Yeah. <laughs> well, good. Well, before we get into that, we have an amazing sponsor. That we do. Jim, Music's, let's talk about our Music our City Removal. Yes. Music City Removal is the number one junk removal service in Nashville. From residential, commercial, and construction, they are experts in ridding you of junk. Their costs include labor and dumping fees without any hidden or added expenses. Whether you need a full clean out or just one item removed, they have you covered. The Music City Removal team knows the importance of respect and trust while in someone else's home, particularly yours. They understand, or your clients, they understand the inconvenience or of junk left behind by previous homeowners and tenants that are and are determined to provide an affordable and customer-focused junk removal service that puts you first. For a free on-site estimate, just go to musiccityremoval.com. That's musiccityremoval.com. Music City Removal, because clutter ain't cute. There you go. <laughs> I don't know, Jason, no offense, but I, I think Carrie Ann does it better. I'm not She sure. does. She does. <laughs> she really does. I'll and let's get, get, I'll let's get, get the get, job back to her uh, when uh, she gets back. And let's give a shout out to Miss Carrie Ann Sear. You know, she's not here with us today. Love that lady. Uh, she's uh, on the road with her mom right now. They're uh, uh, finding a new and better doctors, and we're excited about that. And, and we absolutely continue to lift her up and, and know that Meg Sear is going to be just fine. Thank yes. you. Thank you, God. Yes. All right. Um, so, Chrissy has agreed to be with us today <laughs> because we have been, you know, she's she's proven herself in the short time she's been with us how instrumental she, her skills are when it comes to social media marketing. And, you know, this is way over my head, as you know. I mean. That's saying something. You're pretty tall. <laughs> but it's way, way over my head. And we're just so grateful for her being part of this organization because she has made such a difference in that arena, Chrissy. Thank you. So we're going to ask about, are we going to find out some secret sauce or what are we going to find out? That's why I'm here. Y'all be pulling back the curtains because I've, I've been pretty impressed. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, everything that you've done in, in your webpage, I mean, you've grown your uh, uh, your uh, subscribers or whatever, the likes or something. See, yeah. that's how much in it that we understand. So, right. Yes, yeah, you, I love your post. I love how personal they they are, and um, so yes, I'm hoping to uh, get some of that secret sauce in in today's episode. You know, I don't think it's as complicated as people think it is. Um, I think really, it's that's because about, you're not us. I <laughs> know <laughs> uh, you have all the tools. It's just it's about being organic and being personal. And you know, people don't want to hear from a robot, and they don't want to hear from you know a corporate voice. They want to hear from a person. And so I think all of the social media we've done so far really gives a personality to Realty One Group Music City, and you know, really represents the personalities that come with all of our agents and all of our family here. So it's just organic. So Monty, we got to get personalities. <laughs> That's where I've been missing it. I knew I was missing something significant, you it's know? Well, Monty, Monty just got on MySpace. Is that a step or not? Oh my goodness. <laughs> uh, we did set up some new stuff for Monty and he's, he's good at being a provider of content for me to curate. So. <laughs> Does, so, it have, does it have to do with eye buyers all the time? Or? <laughs> no, I stay away from that. <laughs> so, Chrissy, let's imagine that you're speaking to uh, somebody who's fairly new to social media marketing. Okay, suppose it was me. Now, <laughs> let's not go that far back. Okay, let's just you're you're dealing with uh, somebody maybe newer to the business though, and 
and, but they and they're, they know that there's that's really an important part. Well, where would you start? Where would you start with that topic? I would say speak to what you know. Right. Uh, a lot of people try to jump in and they want to be the expert on everything and every area and every detail. And, you know, we just, we aren't, we all have our things that we're really good at or things we really are passionate about. And so, you know, I've seen some people who jump in brand new and they, you know, they focus on, you know, maybe restaurants because they're a big foodie. And mm -hmm. so that's just a good capture point. Or, you know, we are in Music City and some people are musicians, singers, songwriters. So they kind of include that part of their personality. Um, some people specialize in listings or buyers. And so they just kind of focus what they're good at and that's what they lead with. And I think it can become more encompassing, but if you're just starting out, don't try to be a professional at everything. Don't try to be perfect. Just go with what you know. And, and that's part of that organic part. I understand when you say organic, it means being real, right? Yeah. 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 And just speak from the heart. Yes. I know that the few th it's a few of the things that I've been involved with you <clears throat> in doing here, it's like you don't take a second take. <laughs> you don't like taking a second take. I'll say it that way. Yeah. Because you really believe that the more authentic it is, the more believable it is the better the connection is yes. with those viewers. Yeah, definitely. I think um, sometimes a second take is necessary if you really, really do something wrong. Right. But really, I think the, the mistakes are what show people that you're human. And it's kind of what gives a little humor to your posts. Uh, I was actually sharing a post with an agent I was working with today. And she said, oh my gosh, I don't know how you were walking on that dock, I would have fallen off. And then the next video was my blooper reel of me being like, whoa, I almost fell off. <laughs> <laughs> and that got more reaction than the actual sales post itself, so. <laughs> yeah, I know that uh, over the years, I've, I've worked with a guy by the name of Frank, I can't think of the last name on viral marketing. And he said, whenever you do a video, always share the uh, bloopers as well, because that's where well, people get connected, you know, on, on a higher, a deeper level possibly. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Monty, do you remember um, back in the day when we did VidSigs? I do. And how each of your videos started off? I do. With what? You were ahead of your time, weren't you? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> it started off with some sort of... Flub. You know, flub, yeah, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Because yeah. it was all about making it real. All about making it real. Yep, that part hasn't changed. So how important is video and social media? Video is huge. That's probably one of the most important things. Um, you know, that's what shows that you're that you're a real person. Um, you know, anyone can have a copywriter type something good up and you know proofread their work and make them sound a certain way. And the video is is really how people connect. You know, they hear your voice and they feel like they know you. And you, that's how you really are increasing your followers and people want to tune in to the next thing because they feel like you're a friend of theirs. So they're more supportive. So video is huge. So are there any, any tips uh, as far as the videos, um, shooting them, apps, or? Uh, there's a couple. So I'm a really big believer in, well, I, I don't know, this may be bad, but I'm a big believer in shooting with my phone. You know, I don't get too fancy. They're amazing cameras. I'm 4K. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah they're, definitely. They're so, I mean, there's some other things that are additions that you can add to your camera. Um, some of them are, you know, like a... I guess it kind of stabilizes your video. So if you're doing like video walkthroughs, putting your camera phone in those helps kind of make it not as shaky. Uh, kind of tools like that are great, but. Like a gimbal? Yes, exactly. Um, there's like the Osmo Mobile, I think. Um, a lot of those things are helpful, but they're not super necessary. Most of my videos, I think I'm shooting from an arm's length and I'm just trying to make sure it's a reasonable angle. No one wants to look up your nose, you know? I learned that from my wife. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I uh, look at the camera, like that's who you're speaking to. People go off in space and mm. um, I think it's just pretend that camera is the person standing in front of you. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Good. That right there is Radio 101. <laughs> it is. You know, when you crack the mic in radio and you addressed, you know, you had a 50,000 watt stick going out to hundreds of thousands of people, mm -hmm. you were speaking to one. Wow. That was it. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah. So That's most good. of it hasn't changed, I don't think. It's just applying it in different ways. Yeah. <laughs> Deep thoughts by Chrissy. <laughs> <laughs> Deep thoughts. Deep thoughts. <laughs> yeah. So uh, on the videos, uh, you know, it, it's so funny uh, that I'm admitting this. Am I supposed to do it? This way or this way? I mean, does it even matter any? I, the paradigm question. is kind of shifting, isn't it? So what I've noticed is that these platforms that really served for a horizontal 
recording have now kind of done some things to make that vertical recording a little more aesthetically pleasing. You know, they kind of do some like sideline imagery and things like okay. that. Um, what I try to do is I do most of mine in the portrait mode, the phone up and down, okay. um, because that's the way that it's going to feed the best to the stories on Facebook and Instagram. Okay, And then I will try to take some footage that is horizontal to make a YouTube video a little bit better. But if it's like a quick organic video, it's pretty much always portrait. Really? Uh, all right. There's my, uh, that's my nugget for the day. So. <laughs> yeah. Well, cool. So, um, you know, I just, I, I really, I still struggle in front of this thing, though. <laughs> so what, what do you tell somebody to get over that? You know, I mean, not everybody looks like you do, Chrissy, <laughs> okay? And and I, I'm just saying, how do you just get used to it? Like I was just sharing earlier, it's like, okay, I just finally had to admit that, okay, this is who, this is all it's going to get. I'm not going to get any better <laughs> than that and just be okay with it. Yeah. Um, actually, it's funny. We were talking about that earlier to the, the agent I was working with. And I was telling her, she said, well, I don't really love my teeth, so I don't want to be on video. And I said, no one is looking at your teeth. No one cares. We all care how we look more than anyone else cares how right, we look. Right, and right. we notice things that no one else will notice. And I used to record video before I had braces and I hated those videos. No one in my entire life has ever said anything about the pre braces videos, post <laughs> post braces videos. Like no one, no one notices. Wow. So I think it's just one of those things. The more you do it, the more you get comfortable. You know, when you start getting positive feedback, you're going to start feeling good about those videos, and it's just kind of going to become subconsciously a positive thing. It's no longer a fear. Um, just know that no one thinks about you as much as you think about you. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's that's kind of a that's, uh, that's, is that true? I thought I thought you thought about me all. The the time jason <laughs> you're always number one for yourself you know okay so i'm just kidding i'm just kidding uh, i'm just kidding. Up <laughs> but it's kind of like you know i tell i tell people that when they're you know looking at their home i said you know i mean we, we always want a home to show well but when it comes to the really fine details i'll tell people look you'll, you're aware of stuff that other people yeah. aren't going to notice when they walk in the house yeah you know? But I mean, with that being said, I do tell people to be be aware of your presence. You know, yeah. I try not to. You don't want a booger hanging out or anything like that. Yeah, yeah. Make sure you don't have food in your teeth. Sometimes and... you do. <laughs> It'll go viral. I will yeah. say uh, wrinkles show up on camera more than you think they yeah. will. So, yeah. you know, just try to be presentable, but don't focus on things you can't change. Chrissy's hitting a lot of, on a lot of stuff that I talk about as well. Right. You know, uh, one thing I will say is that when you do record stuff, listen or watch it back. You know, if you're doing a podcast, if you're if you're doing a video, watch it and then take notes from it. And, you know, if you think in some of these podcasting platforms that I belong to, there are amateur podcasters out there that are editing their each show, sometimes four or five hours at a time oh for each goodness. episode for an hour long show. Wow. And it's because they're taking out the ums, the uhs, the breaths. And I'm going, mm -hmm. what are you doing? You're dehumanizing yeah. this. Yeah. And if you're oh, and if you think you say a certain phrase or a. Uh, crutch or some sort of tick that comes out and you don't like it, then I always advise write it down. So if you think you say um too much, write down um in front of you. Okay? Legit radio tool. We did this. Write it down. Keep it in front of you. Every time you have the urge to say um, say nothing. <laughs> Just pause. Hmm. It's okay to have a pregnant pause because <laughs> what does that do it, it draws you in mm -hmm. right, right it helps you collect your thoughts so what if there's too many of them that you'd have a whole list of things that you there were say. guys in radio that would set up topics for 15 minutes and they would go for about that long <laughs> when they were setting up their topic <laughs> i kid you not tom like if you ever go back and you go on youtube look up tom like uh, he would set up a top. He's not he's kind of off color, but he was masterful at setting up a topic, whether you're doing a video or anything. It's okay. You don't have to fill every single second with a sound. Mm -hmm. People will be drawn in if you pause. <laughs> That's, that I'll true. put my mic. Down that was now. pretty rich. That was pretty rich. <laughs> that that might have been worth the admission right there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so Chrissy, how long? I mean, should this be like an hour long, or should how how long should these uh, oh, no. videos be? <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, I'm just kidding. So, it, there's some new features that Instagram put out to accommodate longer videos. So, when you record a video for Instagram, if you go longer than 
I forget what the what the actual time limit is now, but it will tell you. I think it's um, when you go longer, it'll say, do you want to do this as an IGTV video and just show a preview on your page? And I want to say it's like 50 seconds or if it goes longer than 50 seconds, it turns into IGTV. Doesn't mean they can't keep watching it. It just means they have to click keep watching. Mm -hmm. So you really want to keep it under that mark if you want it to be something that's just going to show up on their profile and not make them click anything else to keep watching. And, mm -hmm. you know, most people are just going to keep scrolling mm -hmm. and then they might miss something important. So mm -hmm. keep it under that, that 50 second mark. And um, if you're doing, you know, YouTube videos for most topics, people kind of stop paying attention at the two minute mark. So I say around two minutes, you know, two to three. If you go longer than that, it's gotta be something I think really specific that people are tuning in for a very specialized class or something, you know, mm -hmm. but just for engaging entertainment content, I feel like that's your mark. Two minutes or less. Yeah. Okay. Jim, is that, uh, is that your yeah. as well? Uh, again, going back to podcasts, a lot of people, well, how long should my podcast be? Same kind of, you know, if they're going to listen or watch and engage for a long time, 10 minutes, 15, 20 minutes, it better be good, you know? <laughs> or you could pause. Pause. <laughs> <laughs> After I mean. pause. <laughs> so in the podcast world, they get in their head that they have to, you know, well, 30 minutes, 40 minutes, 60 minutes. It depends on how compelling the topic. You know, the last show we recorded here was 45 minutes, but it was compelling stuff. Right. Mm -hmm. It was good stuff. And people will be able to stop once they get to the place where they, they're getting to, if they're working out or anything, the podcast is an on-demand platform. Mm -hmm. So they can listen back to it. It'll pick right back up where they left off and they can yeah. continue on listening. So, you know, if you, I mean, Joe Rogan, he's one of the top podcasters out there. He'll do three hours on a podcast. Wow. It's amazing. That's long. But I mean, that's the average length of a morning show, radio morning yeah, show. Sure. So, yeah. Hmm. Wow. So what are some other, other tips? That you can uh, um, I think diversify. People seem to find the one thing that they're good at and they're comfortable with, and they think that's that's enough, you know. And that kind of started it started with MySpace. <laughs> um, it's kind of outdated now, and then it kind of went to Facebook, and then you saw the popularity of Instagram grow, and then that became the hot topic, and then there was Snapchat, and now there's TikTok. I mean, it's always growing. So mm. I feel like you know, don't you have to learn each one of those, or or. You I mean, have to, but <laughs> it's good to stay informed and kind of, you know, you want to stay in front of your audience. So if your audience moves around, so do you. Sure. <laughs> Would you agree that TikTok is skewing younger? TikTok is definitely skewing younger. Um, you kind of see that it, all these new platforms come out, like, you know, Facebook came out when I was a lot younger. And now those people who started using it are an older category. Then Instagram came out and they're younger. And now that's an older category. Now TikTok, mm. it's, you know, that new platform always comes out kind of with that mm. new generation. Mm. Um, but that's not to say that you can't keep up with it. I personally haven't used TikTok because I don't feel like it gets my message across the way that I've like learned it yet. So even I have learning to do because they're always changing, but. TikTok is it's interesting to see how it's playing out. Yeah. Have you, are really. you guys using it at all? TikTok? No. Are you familiar with it? Oh, I've heard. Okay. I, I, do, I couldn't, if somebody held a gun on me and said, hey, <laughs> if, if you don't dial into Instagram right now, then I'm going to shoot you. I'd just be laying there dead. How, <laughs> how would you explain TikTok, Chrissy? So to me, TikTok <laughs> is, there are certain businesses that I think benefit from TikTok. And I am not sure that, I'm not sure that ours has figured out the most beneficial way to use it yet because it is very short videos with music sequences that have hmm. coordinated choreographed dances that go with those music sequences. And when people do it, they kind of go viral because the song has become popular and then their dance comes popular. And we actually did the, the don't rush challenge for Realty One Group. And that is something that kind of came from that. So we said, well, let's hop on the viral bandwagon and do something kind of fun and get people's attention. That wasn't TikTok though, was it? That wasn't TikTok, but it came from TikTok. Oh. And it kind of grew outside of that and became even more popular. Um, but I think that TikTok is one of those things that if you're going to use it, know how you're investing your time. You know, we only have so much time in a day. So if it's not something that's really producing for you and it's not getting in front of the right audience and you know who your audience right. is, then just don't don't waste your precious hours on that. I don't see the connection of, of homes and dance moves. I think it could provide the fact that you have interests other than real estate. 
So right. if you make a connection, shudder the thought, shudder the thought. Absolutely. <laughs> you know, I'm looking at an account right here. It's Mullen Woodworks, and he's a woodworker, and all he does is take videos of various woodworking techniques. And to me, it's fascinating to watch how these guys work. That's on TikTok? On mm -hmm. TikTok. Okay. It's also on Instagram. There are people that build tremendous Instagram accounts. There, um, I mean, it's, it's kind of funny with TikTok. There are a lot of women who um, build followings, hundred thousands or more of people that follow them. It is... So when are you setting money up on a TikTok account? <laughs> hey, he did a boomerang the other day. So. Didn't you I do know. a Dancing with the Nashville I, Stars a couple of years back? We could take some of those videos. Oh, that'd go. be fun. Yeah, I think there's a way to use it. It's just knowing that each platform has its strengths. And so you can't just go on it and talk for 15 seconds about a house because yeah. that's not what it's for. You have to find a creative way to use it. And maybe that's like something with fun walkthroughs or, you know, something like that. But it's, it's the newest and most unique platform. And I don't know that the audience of it currently is within our most popular um, here's, demographic. Here's an idea for TikTok and even Instagram. If you, how many times you come into a house and it's an open house maybe, and they ha it has maybe a cool feature, right? Maybe mm -hmm. one, a zero in on maybe a cool water feature in the backyard, maybe a cool feature of a pool. Uh, you know, Carrie Ann's house has got the, the, the chaise lounges that are in the pool. I think that's a cool feature. Yeah. You know, fireplaces with the TV above. Hey, can you see, can you see yourself, you know, watching the Sunday game, football game on, mm -hmm. on the TV? Because, I mean, that, I think, could be very relevant. You know? Yeah, and TikTok is very visual. Like yes. you said, with the woodworking, mm -hmm. people kind of watch these videos to get lost in some visual things. So if you found a way to really focus on those eye-catching pieces, people might tune in because they want to see cool home stuff. And mm -hmm. if they know that your page is always showing something really cool, they're going to see. Mm. But it's only it 15 is. seconds. They're very short videos. Um, I'd say the attention span of it is 15 yeah. seconds. <laughs> yeah. It's a scrolling type of app. So, okay. well, who would you, how would you describe the user of TikTok? I 12. Think <laughs> I mean, it's all ages. It really is. Yeah. I'd say that's probably going to be our popular buying demographic in about five years, if that gives you. An I idea. would agree. <laughs> yeah. um, I mean, because I, I I go to it because it's it's fun, it's uplifting. Uh, like we talked about before, I, I like to marinate my mind in good stuff. Mm -hmm. And whenever I get bogged down by Facebook, because Facebook gets very political and, and, and all that stuff, it's one of those things that TikTok just kind of takes you away, resets your mind, maybe you'll laugh. And come on, laughter helps everything in, this, yeah. in the yeah. time that we're going through. Mm -hmm. So if that really helps you out and you're able to do that for the recipient, your audience, then do it. You know, show your personality. Mm -hmm. yeah. Fly your freak flag. <laughs> Sorry, hold on. Fly your freak flag. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, the important thing to remember is that TikTok and Instagram are visual. Mm -hmm. So if you're not showing something that's visually appealing, then put it on Facebook <laughs> and talk about it instead because <laughs> those are those are visual. And okay. What, what real estates do? Real estate agents do? They're selling a sexy product. Mm -hmm. It's got a lot of sex appeal. It's got a lot of visual appeal to it. Um, I actually sat down with a real estate agent a couple month, about a month ago. He was picking my brain on how he could differentiate himself, and I told him about the idea of saying, "Well, on Facebook, you can become the the mayor of your town. You know, interview all the different businesses, go to the different um, attractions and things of that nature." I said, "But ultimately, I said, what else do you like?" He's like, "I really like working on cars." I go, "Dude." Then show, do, do videos of you changing a tire or doing a brake job or something like that. You would probably win a lot of hearts of men. Mm -hmm. and, I, and then I stumbled upon this. I'm like, dude, do a practical walkthrough video. Okay, not through the front door. Do it through the garage. You know what I mean? And do it different <laughs> that way. Because if you're going to buy a home, you're going to enter the home normally through the garage. So show what it looks like entering the home through the garage. Just mm -hmm. take, like on a gimbal, put your phone on something and take it through the, through the house that way. Yeah. You know? Just little ways to differentiate <clears throat> and be more practical, I guess, would be a yeah. way to do it. So, yeah. more <laughs> practical. <laughs> <laughs> I got to work on those pauses. <laughs> really? And so, one thing, uh, Chrissy, I, I've, I've heard over and over and over, and everybody has their own ideas about how often to post, when to post. Is that, is that even, is it still relevant anymore? Or, um, it is. There are, there are algorithms that as a normal layman's person, we just will never figure out because it's, you know, it's on this kind of hidden back end, but there are companies that 
have figured that out and hmm. they, okay. they're available resources for us. So we kind of lean on them. And if you're kind of curating your content through these sources, I know um, back at you media, Hootsuite, you know, these, these companies, they're really kind of created so that you can put out a ton of content at once and they know the time. So they'll hmm. say, Hey, I think okay. 320 is probably a good time for this. And I don't know why, but that's just what it is. Um, so I think that they have of, all that data to look at, yeah. you know, oh, yeah. compare it to yeah. that we and don't have. There's a ton of those companies and there's just no way we can see behind that curtain, um, yeah. the things that they can see. So that's one way. The other thing is that these algorithms don't show everything in a newsfeed. So there are certain pages based on interaction that get more visibility for people. Um, so, you know, you, you can post a lot more often than you think you can. You might think you're bombarding your followers, but they're not seeing every single post you post. Right. So, you know, we post once or twice a day and we try to vary content and, you know, you, not everyone is a picture. Sometimes we do a video, sometimes we do a interactive poll, you know, whatever it is, but you can post more often than you think you can. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's, it's very noisy. Uh, you know, cause by the time I get on it and check it there, there's all that little red circle with all the, uh, <laughs> I'm like, Oh my goodness. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I, I got a question I'm curious about if you had one app you could keep, you know, as far as in the social media marketing type, what would that be? <laughs> I mean, I, I, I'm gonna kind of cheat on this question. Uh -oh. So I'm gonna keep my Instagram because it speaks to my Twitter and my Facebook at the same time. So okay, fair <laughs> enough. Um, it's it's just a smart way to have everything synced and get content out to everything. So yeah, I would keep that. I keep my Instagram. Okay. <laughs> okay. What about as far as creating? Uh, so creating, I have an app called Quick that is for my video editing because. I'm busy and I don't have a lot of time, but I like videos with music and graphics and, you know, kind of like interchanges. And so the quick app just lets me pick video snippets and pictures and I get to pick the music I like mm. with it. I can upload my own music with it and I can make a video that looks like it took me a lot longer in minutes. Oh, nice. Yeah. And I share it to everything. And people say, wow, you must be a great video editor. I'm like, nah, just cheat. <laughs> yes, I What's am. That called? What's quick. that called? Quick? It's quick with a Q U I K. Yeah. So I mean, that's, that's how I my spell secret. it all the time. <laughs> what is your Instagram handle? <laughs> uh, so I have Chrissy dot Amundsen. It's my first dot last name, and that's my uh, my personal one. And then and we have uh, the Amundsen Group, which is our real estate one. So A L. It's A M U N D S O N. Okay. Chrissy dot Amundsen. Oop, I got an H in my name though. <laughs> So, yeah, two S's. There two S's and a Y. <laughs> Following. So I do suggest this to everybody. I think it's essential to have your personal and your professional. And your professional can still be super fun and have all your personality, but if someone is looking to me as a real estate professional or an area professional, they don't necessarily want to see like the new coffee mug I bought yesterday at Ross. You know, they want to see relevant content, but I still want to share my personal content. So I think it's important to kind of have a differentiation there mm -hmm. so that you don't bog down your professional following with kind of unimportant things. And I'm glad you brought that up because that <laughs> that is a tricky line to mm -hmm. hold. Um, and especially when I, I tried to figure out Instagram, I, we we have Instagram. I seriously don't know what's out there on it. So, <laughs> and we and so I even tried setting it up because it one of them. I think Facebook made me create a business Instagram account. So now I'm switching between different ones. And, and so to that aspect on Instagram, should you just keep it personal at that point, or is it, it should you do uh, both business and personal on that as well? I think do both because Instagram's given us the ability to make, to differentiate something as a business account. And that's where it ends up having that um, integration factor with Facebook. So you do wanna create a business account for your business, mm -hmm. have that connected to your business page on Facebook so that they speak to each other and then have your personal separate. You know, if you're gonna post yeah. pictures of your food, if you're tagging the restaurant and sharing a local location, put it on your professional. But if you're just there shouting you out, you know, your, your great cooking skill that day, put it on your personal. <laughs> right, okay. That's great, that's great like advice. That. You know, I, I would give a, a reminder for those who are 
um, wondering why they didn't get hired, they might want to look at their <laughs> their content. You know, I mean, uh, you know, Connie and I true. have been looking at resumes um, for the last several weeks, months, whatever it's been, and and uh, it's amazing how many people didn't make the cut just after Connie saw them on Facebook. Yeah, you know? it's true. Yeah, Which one thing? What, what's one thing that stood out to you, Monty? I really can't say it on the radio <laughs> show. <laughs> I wouldn't want to. Thanks for playing, yeah. Jim. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, I, and to that point, it's one thing I shared with the group is that you know your online presence, that's your resume because mm -hmm. people will check you out and you know, before you go on a listing appointment or if you're talking to anybody uh, as far as, you know, yeah, as a buying agent, they're going to go online. Yeah. They're going to, you know, Google your name. We live in a fishbowl. Oh, yeah, we are. So whatever you're posting out there, people are going to see. And there's going to be an opinion about it mm -hmm. one way or the other. Which also is important to remember you have privacy settings. So if you are going to have a personal page that you do anything that might be questionable, at least make it private. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. At good point. Least. <laughs> Well, getting back to the Instagram thing, um, what about using stories as opposed to your page? Your oh, actual, I love stories. Because stories, I see a lot of in, like influencer level people, people that have you know hundreds of thousands, if not millions of followers. They'll put, they'll want their page to look a certain way. So when you go and visit their profile, you'll know without a doubt what they do. So they kind of put a little bit more business centric on their page, but yet on their stories, which are up for twenty four hours and then they disappear they're a little bit more aloof, more fun, kind of showing behind mm -hmm. the scenes with their kids and stuff like that. So yes. a lot of people kind of differentiated that. Well, what's the story as part of it? I don't even know. Um, well, you go to Instagram, and at the top, if you go to the home page, you've got the option of scrolling through your feed like this. Um, you have the option of searching different things and just kind of going on the little jaunts if you want. <laughs> and then up top, you have stories. So. Uh, right now, I've got a post from Mercedes-Benz of Music City, Brittany Aldean, Rich Redmond, the qualified captain. That's hilarious. That could, that's an account to follow. You want to see some funny Who stuff. Who has time for all this? I do. Understand. It's <laughs> not, not me, I mean. I, I don't have any time for this. You know, you've got Amen, a whole, Monty. Yeah. Some people are very business-oriented. Then you get a guy like Grant Cardone. He'll show, hey, I'm in the shower. You know, stuff like that and playing with his kids. Oh, so narcissistic. Totally. Total absolute. Dude, come on. It says in the Bible that at the end times that people will be lovers of self. That We're living in it right now. Your stories are your personal TV show. So, I mean, you're the highlight. You know, take, take advantage of that, you know, and that's where you show that personality. Um, I do agree there's a lot of accounts that are very particular about what they post in their feed because it ends up being that little grid and they have a certain aesthetic that they want and maybe they want to share some restaurant they're at but that just doesn't match their color scheme so they throw it in their stories um i'm mm. not hugely crazy about that but you know it it just depends if you're in like a very graphic business maybe that's the thing but Stories are super fun. Um, I almost never post something without including some version of a story with it. So we do welcome posts for new agents coming on and I post the welcome post where I can put their little fun bio and people can comment and welcome them. But then I throw it in the story so that it pops up in people's scrolling and through watching those stories. They mm. click to the next one and I want them to see it. So mm. it gives me two chances to show off this content. In the stories, you can add fun little like moving gifts and gifs and <laughs> you know all sorts well, of well you had him shaking a hip the other day he was boomeranging <laughs> and that's part of it <laughs> so what is boomeranging <laughs> so boomerang is something that's part of instagram where it, yeah it does like a back and forth oh and okay, so okay, okay. i mean you got to have a little kind of fun movement with it or your boomerang looks really weird but monty had it he had the hips yeah going. he had the <laughs> hips going i was a little worried there for a moment i was like uh-oh well, <laughs> Um, but yes, no, stories, do stories. They're so easy. You can tag things, you can put locations on there, you can tag businesses, you can mention other Instagram accounts. It just kind of like cross markets you across mm. different things and you just end up where people are scrolling through. Why don't you want to be there? It just gives you a second place to be. Wow. Okay. <laughs> what is your morning process? You get up, you pick up your phone. What do you go to first? I, well, I go to my emails. <laughs> I do too. Um, <laughs> Feel responsible that way. <laughs> yeah. I, so this is weird, but um, Instagram and Facebook came out with memories 
And so they show you what you posted three years ago or two years ago. And so that's kind of become a I thing. I love those. I do too. Mm-hmm. And maybe that's narcissistic. I want to look at my own posts from you know, years ago. That's going to be hell for people who actually <laughs> post negative stuff all the time. And mine's you know, all full yeah. of Sad my news. kids. So I'm yeah. watching my kids grow up. And so oh, that's, right. cool. that's cool. That's same, the same thing for me. Yeah, yeah that's cool. <laughs> but that's one of the first things I do is I just kind of curious about my memories. You know, what was I doing on this day 10 years ago? I've had Facebook a really long time. So it brings up a lot of different chapters. And 10 I think years ago, cool. you were like nine. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> 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 that's our I'm, first day on the school bus. <laughs> 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 I'm not negating this. <laughs> I'm not arguing. <laughs> um, but I like that part. And then, you know, that's kind of a fun way to, you can share your memories. So if you were doing something really cool three years again, share it again. You got a whole bunch of new followers in the last three years. So reshare that memory. Why not? I like, I like it when people <laughs> post on you resharing something that was old and yeah. thinking it was now. Think yeah. now yeah, yeah. <laughs> See, Jason's thing is, are the dad jokes. Yeah. That's oh my it. gosh. Yeah. <laughs> I, I've seen them. I've tagged him in something. I was like, Jason, this sounds like you. But <laughs> hey, you know, know know yourself, know your personality, own it. <laughs> what have you seen any examples of real estate agents using it in a very creative manner? Have, has anybody come to mind? Uh, well, I borrowed a few ideas from some different people kind of along the way um, where I like having kind of themed days. So I've seen people that through um, Andrea is great at it. She does a where to go Wednesdays yeah, and she, she features does. like a local spot and I've seen people do like trivia Tuesdays and um, feature Fridays. And I, I don't know, like they do these days. And then I found myself like going to that person's page every Tuesday because I wanted to see what their trivia was, you know, and I think that was really engaging and um, that's a great way to capture it. And I used to do walk through Wednesdays and I'd have people be like, uh, where's my walkthrough today? I'm like, oh, oh my gosh, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, so that's a great way to use it. And then um, I think just the people who really cross market with other people, if you're always shouting out your your local features, then they start shouting you out and they're commenting and tagging. And you know, before you know it, you've reached three times as many people because you're working with three times as many businesses and it's like a win, win, win all around, so. So Monty, that translates to you and I of uh, like, uh, what were we supposed to do on Wednesdays and uh, forgot what I was posting on Fridays. <laughs> <laughs> it can be late, it's okay. <laughs> Now, where do you get a lot of your influence from? Who do you listen to, and who? How do you? Wh- who do you marinate your mind in? Oh gosh, um, I started following a few different kind of like fun social media accounts uh, that, like Honey Bar Media, I found them, and I was like, wow, they have my same voice. I like their posts. This looks like something I would do. And I was trying to be organic, but I also had no ideas. So I said, well, let me just follow along kind of with what they're doing and make it my own. So uh, there's definitely been a couple like that uh, that I've borrowed. So if you really aren't sure which direction to take, the first thing I would do is look at the pages you like the most. What do you like about them? And, Mm. you know, that's kind of different for everybody, but Honey Bar was mine. That was my biggest influence. (laughs) Sorry, I had Interesting. just the show. <laughs> <laughs> no, this has been great, great, uh, great information, Chrissy. We really, really appreciate yeah. you coming on here with us. I mean, this is way over my head, but it takes a special talent to do all I that. Mean, it does. I, I just don't know how how you have time to look at all those things and do all those things and become an expert at all those things. But we're just glad you're part of the family. Is all I can say. You know? I'm happy yes. to help. <laughs> so I guess we're going to wind her up here. Yeah, and uh, thank everybody for in, uh, in tuning in and hearing this uh, these secrets that uh, mm-hmm. Christy shared with us. And be sure and uh, check us out in, in the future. And that is uh, the Talk of Music City. Isn't talk Music City. Talk Music City. Three talk words. Com. Talk. Three words. <laughs> music City. Hundreds of words of encouragement, positivity, and information. Thousands of words. Hundreds of thousands of words. <laughs> From three little words. Talk Music City. Dot com. <laughs> <laughs> Thank, Thank you, you, Chrissy. Thank you, everybody. Thanks.